Well, would you look at how awesome that front wheel turned out from the powder coater. And would you look at that Bates tire. Woo-hoo! Woo, doggies! Welcome to Saturday Sportster. Woo! Let's get going here. Now, I have had some uh, questions on the Bates tires about direction of rotation. And so I emailed Mr. Wolfgang over there in Germany, where we get these from. And he told me most people are putting the arrow forward. So this is going to be the brake disc side, and this is going that way. We are reusing our brake disc. We are not trying to break the bank with this project. Brake disc, always use Loctite. And let's take a look at what the torque spec is. Specific fastener torque value, XL. Oh, front brakes, 16 to 24. So, uh, we were at some other higher spec for those other ones, so let's, let's go to the high end of the spec. Why not? 24. Okay, we got these awesome colony. Break this bolt kit, rotor, rotor kit. These are going to be a T40 Torx head. A little Loctite. And you don't have to freaking overdo it on the Loctite. Bada bing. That'll do it. There she goes. You know, my holes lined up. <clears throat> All right, gang, we had just a little bit of corrosion going on there. So we had to force it on. Sometimes you'll have that. Luckily, when I forced it on there, I had the holes lined up. I know this would have been a lot easier on the workbench, but we got a big mess going on over there. So it's whatever. Tighten those in a cross pattern, please. Oh, Nelly. She's trying to get away from me. And there you have it. Okay. On the other side, we're gonna put our decorative cover. Okay, maybe it's not so decorative, but it's still a cover, like so. And we got another set of the same bolts. And since we're not putting a brake disc on here, I think we'll use a little bit of blue, and I don't think there's any need in the world to torque them suckers to what we just torqued the other side to. Huh. Is she a virgin or is she just stuck? Oh, she was stuck. She's not anymore. Ha ha. Oh my goodness gracious. 
Ay, 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 I tell you, it's always something. It's always something. I think we got enough blue Loctite on that one fastener to do four or five or 10 or 12 wheels. Okay, it'll be all right. Except it's everywhere. Okay, just wanted to verify that these were lengthwise going to be okay with no disc on there because this wheel could have dual disc, but the thickness of the disc may have had something to do with the length of the bolt, but it did not. I know what you're thinking. Air ratchet would have been a lot faster. Well, you know me, I wanna feel those threads. Air Ratchet doesn't let me know that something's stripping as I'm tightening it. It just tweaks it. Okay. Not much need for a cross pattern here. We're not really doing anything except putting a little cover on. And not much need for a torque either. There we go. All right, guys, so, and gals, uh, we, Lowered our jack down, which in turn brought our forks up, and I think I pretty much got it lined up to put the wheel on. Pretty excited. And look what else we got. Woo! Colony axle kit. Look at her. All shiny and chrome. Nice stuff. Spacer, nut, washer, lock washer, another washer. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Axle, anti-seize. Anti-seize your axle. On these sealed wheel bearings, if you don't use anti-seize and they get corrosion in there, sometimes the axle will get stuck, especially on the rear. More on the rear than the front. Hopefully pretty soon, we'll get this thing turned around on the lift after we get the back wheel on. And then we can jack her up so you don't have to watch me work down here on the floor anymore. I'm pretty sure this kit says it's for this year model. Oh, oh, fits XL and FXD. Let's uh, double check. We did put new bearings in here. Let's double check this. Oh, yeah, that's a nice. That fits real good. No problem there. Oh. And you may have noticed powder coater smart enough that he didn't powder coat where the axle goes. Because that would have really sucked. And I see he's on the old axle. She goes in from this side. You got this thin washer goes in. And what you can do is you can stick your axle in enough so that it catches it like so put your axle in the hole and then you got the big spacer on this side slider on home like so then you've got hardened washer that's pretty thick and it's got a little bevel on her so we'll put that on next and then a lock washer and a nut Proper method for tightening 39 millimeter front forks, whether it be a, a Sportster or a Dyna, is, okay, you got your axle in, you put your nut on. Can't tighten your nut, because this is gonna spin around. Uh, step one, tighten this pinch bolt. That'll hold this from turning while you tighten the nut. Then you want to tighten your nut to the proper torque. Click. 
Okay, then after you do that, you want to loosen this, and what that does is it centers the axle. Sometimes you'll see it move, and sometimes you won't. So you're going to loosen that again, and then you're going to tighten it back up. Once again, to the proper torque. Click. And there we go. All right, let's go ahead and get the back wheel ready to go on the bike. We brought the table back because that working on the floor wasn't cutting it for me. And let's just give you a nice shot of it. Oh, would you look at that. If y'all remembered how scruddy these wheels were, that powder coat really makes them pop. We'll do the brake side first. We've got cleaned up our brake disc. Uh, it had some brake dust and some grease and grime on it. I used a little bit of brake clean. Now, these are stainless. I took a little steel wool to it. Got her as clean as she can get. And once again, in trending with the theme of making things shiny and clean, to a certain extent, we got a set of colony. Brake disc bolts. Once again, red Loctite is what we need for brake disc bolts. And once again, no need to overdo it. We'll dabble do ya. Like a so. Almost feels like I could have probably tapped out those threads, but they're, they're not like seasoned up or anything. They're just a little hard going. That one went pretty good. And once again, I think I mentioned this once before, if it really feels hard going, then it may be time to stop, regroup. And if you're not gonna tap threads in the holes, you might wanna check to make sure there's no buildup of chrome on the fasteners, because sometimes that happens. I don't think that's the case here. I think that there's just a tad, little tiny bit of corrosion in the holes but they're going down, no problem. They're all tight, we gotta to torque them now. All right, back to our handy ready reference torque value book XL. Let's see what we got here. Brakes, rear. 30 to 45 on a brake disc. So we'll split the difference and we'll make them 35. How about that? Once again, cross pattern. Star pattern. Here we go. Brake disc installed. Okay. Oh, what do we got going on here, folks? We're gonna put a sprocket on because you knew darn well we were gonna use one of our belt to chain conversion kits on this here critter. You knew that, didn't you? I didn't even tell you that, but now you do. Let's get something underneath our wheel here. Clean up that extra red Loctite we got going on there. There goes a nice soft towel we can put down. Now, 
I think it is probably not a bad idea to go ahead and run a tap through the threads on this one because this is the drive side. Just to be sure everything's all in good shape. Thread's good, no residual Loctite from the old uh, belt pulley. So let's uh, get that done. All right, using the proper tap, what do we got here? 7 16 14 threads per inch. Run them in there. Won't hurt anything. We're not gonna bore you with tapping all five holes. You get the general idea. Make sure holes are clean, get done. Maybe a little brake clean on her, a little compressed air in case any crap fell down in the bottom of the hole. And then we can get our moving on with our project and get our sprocket on, get the wheel back on there. Okay, we got all our holes all tapped out, all cleaned out, all blown out and ready to rock. Okay, here's the sprocket, look at her. Oh, geez, Harry sprocket, oh, there we go. Uh, there we go, get her on there. Oh goodness, that's tight, oh gosh. Huh, that's really tight. Here, let's, let's hit it with a hammer a couple times maybe. All right, that looks pretty good. New bolts, always use new bolts. Sprocket or pulley, new bolts. Get new bolts every time, every time. All right, handy dandy torque spec book says, sprocket mounting bolts for a cast wheel, 55 to 65. Red Loctite, red Loctite. Once again, red Loctite. And not like that darn bottle of blue from earlier. That thing really went crazy, didn't it? Okay. Oh my goodness, are we not lined up with our holes here? Let's try a different one. That one doesn't like it. Oh boy. Oh boy. Houston, we have an issue. Let's try it there. You know what I always say, if something ain't working right, stop, regroup, take a look around, figure out why. She just needed an ever so slight adjustment. There she goes. All started by hand. No problemo. There we go. I know. You know me. Like to do it by hand. Don't want to put my half inch impact on it and go. Brrr. Oh shoot. Stuck. Brrr. Oh crap. More stuck. Doesn't want to come out. And once again, when we get to the end of tightening all the bolts, we're gonna use the old cross star pattern again. All right. We got the big torque wrench for this one. 55 to 60, I do believe.
All right. That's all of them. Okay. Rear wheel. Ready to go back on the bike. Woohoo. Okay, before we get our wheel back on, you may notice we don't have any shock absorbers and we keep talking about these jacking the bike up. Well, would you look at our front end? Look how long she is now. Woo! Our good friends over at Progressive Suspension hooked us up with this freaking really swanky set of freaking 15 inch shocks. And look, they're our favorite color, black. Going with the theme. I know, pretty tacky, murdered out. But it's, so far, just a couple small changes in black look really awesome if you ask me. But hey, I'm biased because I'm, I pick the parts. Thank you very much, Progressive Suspension. We're gonna put these to good use on the old Saturday Sportster. Let's get them on the bike. All right, the shocks come with a little mounting kit, uh, different things used for different year models. For our particular model, we are 91 and later. 12883 Sportster, it says use one number one sleeve, which this will get inserted into the shock of the, the eye of the shock, sorry. Ha, shock of the eye. The eye of the shock. And then it also says, and one number four spacer for each shock I placed on the inside because we want the shocks to be level when they're mounted here in our normal spot and because they're different than stock. So we're gonna get one sleeve uh, inside the shock and one spacer. And we'll show you when we put them on the bike how that looks and what, how it's gonna look. It's a new day here in the Lowbrow Workshop. We're gonna take up where we left off. Last time we were talking about motorcycle shocks. Now we got these awesome new shocks. We're gonna get those put on the motorbike. We're gonna get the back wheel put on. Woo! Let's get rolling. I think we'll jack up the lift for a change. Oh, Nelly, wait a minute. We're, we're okay, here we go. All right, there we go. Is she stable, Mabel? Okay. Oh, look out, there we go. Yeah, I'm getting tired of working on the floor when we got this perfectly fine lift here. Okay, so our goal, we're gonna go ahead and get these shocks on, no big mystery going on there. We're gonna wanna put some red Loctite on the top ones. We got some nylock nuts on the bottom ones. We wanna double check that we, we actually have some new shiny bolts that I got from our friends at Colony. And uh, I don't think these are a kit because I needed specific lengths on these. Wanna double check your thread engagement on the top because the stock bolts probably would have been too short and not shiny enough for me with the new shocks because remember we're going to put some spacers on there so that they sit correct on the swing arm and the rear section here. Let's get these shocks on here. Got these awesome shocks from Progressive Suspension. We talked about the application. We've got a top hat in the eye of the shock. This one's already installed. And we've got a couple of spacers. Okay, top bolt, it's coarse thread, threading into the frame. So we're, we've got this and this. Only I could make putting a shock on look hard. Whoa, hell's bells, here we go. All right, okay, get it together. Oh, lock tight. Get some red Loctite on her. There we go. Spacer. Top hat. Loctite. Okay. Before we put the bottom bolt in the shock we're gonna go ahead and yank this belt off because we're doing a chain conversion uh, lucky for me I've already still got the cover discombobulated on the front from something else we were doing sports they're super easy to remove a belt unlike a darn big twin just pops right off of there 
bam. Stupid big twin, you gotta take the whole primary off. That's why we like Sportsters. Okay. Got our spacer, top hat. We're gonna use a nylock on here because we don't want our shocks to come loose when we're going down the road. Okay. Okay, probably is a torque spec on this. Click, there we go. All right, have my prop guy put the wheel up here. Oh wait, that was me. All right, so we got the wheel. Uh, in keeping with our theme of making everything clean and tidy, I got this neat little colony rear axle kit. Woohoo! that's gonna replace this crusty junk here. And would you look at those axle adjusters? Just look at those, those look like crap. So we also have this nifty kit from Colony. Woohoo! shiny, clean awesomeness. Okay. Let's uh, open that package up. We'll get these parts assembled and put them on in the swing arm. You got your adjusters, loops, go in the swing arm, like that, boom, boom. And you got some other stuff here to open up. It's like Christmas around here all the time. That's for the plate that goes on the end of the swing arm. And then we got some nuts and some washers. You want this with the chingadinga facing in like so. So we can go ahead and assemble these on here. That goes first. Then our flat washer. And then our nylocks so we don't lose our adjustment. Simply put that in your swing arm. Okay, like so. And you also may notice how I've got my brake situated. Uh, there's a little slot here with a rubber baby buggy bumper. You're just gonna put that on there. And then you wanna slide, this'll slide back and forth for wherever your axle's gonna be. So we'll start with it right there. And I also gave that a, uh, a coat of this nifty stuff. I uh, use some of this stuff here, Moto Black on the caliper to make it a little shiny. Won't hurt anything. Looks great. Short spacer, long spacer, new shiny nut, and a nice thick flat washer. That goes on the outside of the swing arm as do not crush it. And the latest and greatest clip style. 
for the hole in the axle. That way our nut doesn't come loose. If it does come loose, if it's not tight, if it gets loose for any particular reason, it won't spin off. I seem to remember Harley Davidson likes to have the axle coming in from this side. And the reason for that is because if it were to get loose, it can't turn with the wheel and spin the nut off. Uh, it kind of makes it a pain if your exhaust covers the axle. Sometimes you have to remove your muffler to get the nut off. But we're gonna go ahead and do it that way anyway, just because we can. Uh, one other thing you wanna do. This is a sealed wheel bearing type of wheel. There's no grease on these bearings, they're sealed. So you wanna make sure that you use some liberal, generous amounts of anti-seize on your axle when putting it in the back wheel. And the reason for that is because when I worked at the shop, oh my goodness gracious, bikes were coming in for 10,000 mile service and then they needed a new back tire. And guess what? Harley couldn't afford any anti-seize at the factory, so these things were dry as a bone. And we were finding axles stuck to the bearing from moisture getting in there, or possibly from the customer washing his bike too many times. So always put a bunch of anti-seize on your axle. Hence, the gloves. You don't, won't very rarely see me wearing gloves, but I'm really not a fan of getting this stuff on me. Because, boy, it just gets everywhere. So. Plenty of anti-seize on your axle. That way, next time you want to take it out of there, it'll come back out with no problems. It looks to me like we need to jack our bike up a little bit more. So our swing arm is going to be even with the bearings on the wheel. And we've also tied down the front of the bike so we don't have a calamity here. And large spacer is going to be on the drive side, short spacer on that side. We're going to need that over here and this over there. And there we go. And this is going to come in from the other side. All right. Just going to get that started from over here. And then I'm going to transfer myself over here. So we need to get the disc in between the brake pads, like so. And then I can see that we are not nearly high enough. So we're gonna have to jack her up a little higher to get the axle lined up. Now it's also a good idea to go ahead and start your long spacer on this side before you go to and see how it just kind of hangs out there like a so. Then we're gonna go ahead and kind of get stuff lined up here. We're gonna put our little spacer in right there. Sometimes you gotta kind of lift this up to get that in there like a so. Then take our nicely lubricated axle. And slide her on home. Now I'm guessing it's hitting the spacer that's drooping down over here. So we'll come up. Oh, there it goes. And last but not least, we got to get through our adjuster. And that's that. Okay. Go ahead and get our nuts started. Temporarily, I'm just gonna go ahead and snug this up because the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get the handlebars on the bike with our new riser, solid riser bushings. And then we're gonna turn her around on the lift and make it normal again where the front wheel's in the chalk to continue on our journey with the Saturday Sportster. And in preparation for putting the chain on for the kit, you always want to have your axle as far forward as it will go for when you're breaking your chain. That way, as the chain wears, you'll be moving the wheel backwards. So if you started with it back, you wouldn't have anywhere to go. If your chain got loose, then you'd have to take a link out, and that's silly. So when you, before you uh, put your chain on for cutting it, determining which link to take out to join it back together, 
There really isn't any chain made for any specific application. You're not going to just take a chain out of a box and go, oh, this fits a 2003 Sportster. And part of the reason is because there's so many different combinations of sprocket sizes available. So any chain does need to be cut to length. And we'll show you how, how that gets done too here after we get our front sprocket on, but we're gonna turn our bike around so you can see better because it's kind of hard to see that side of the bike from over there, isn't it? Okay, great. Woo!